Hey everybody, welcome to another model building workshop. I am Mr. Allen. I'm coming to you from my basement here in Providence, Rhode Island. And we're doing this on behalf of the Community Libraries of Providence. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, a famous plane that probably nobody knows about. <laughs> this is the Vickers Armstrong um, Wellesley. And as you're going to notice right away, look at the look at the wingspan on this bad boy, huh? It's an enormous wingspan on this plane. quite the spread and this is in 172nd scale this is the old matchbox kit yeah matchbox from the 1970s one thing I think that's really interesting about this plane you're gonna see these these underwing pods which is kind of typical of modern fighter jets now this is where the uh, the bombs were stored and this plane was designed in uh, 1937 and so they had the bombs stored under here so the Wellesley was designed in the late 30s and they were working on a government requirement for an aircraft and the original idea that they had uh, was for a biplane but the company Vickers Armstrongs found the uh, the biplane to be less than stellar that they were working on and uh, on their own incentive um, or risk I guess I should say they decided to design this monoplane instead or they were pushing this instead of the biplane uh, the government the British government the RAF was a little nervous of biplanes in the mid late 30s uh, but this performed so well that the biplane concept went out the window and this was adopted. So this plane has some uh, very interesting uh, features to it. It has a geodetic or geodesic uh, construction. I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah, I think you can with a light hitting it. So that means it has a uh, metal tubular like basket frame kind of uh, construction on the wings. And you'll see it's got the fabric uh, fuselage, but the wings and even the, the the tail planes here had that metal tubing construction, which meant that it was lightweight but strong and durable. And if it took damage, it would uh, it could it would handle damage better than than other types of designs. And uh, this design, this geodetic design becomes more famous in the follow-up plane that Vickers Armstrong Company came up with, which was the Wellington Bomber. I think everybody's probably familiar with that plane, which is a lot more famous than this one. But this did serve well in the early stages of the Second World War. These were used out in uh, East Africa and um, the Middle East throughout the war, um, the early parts anyway, you know, and... Um, like Egypt and uh, Transjordan, or you know Jordan today, Palestine, that area, uh, and out in the campaigns out in uh, Ethiopia and so forth, out in Somalia, Somalia and so forth over in there, because uh, these planes had an incredible range. And in late 1937, I believe I'm going to check that in just a second. Uh, a group of these took off from Egypt and flew a 48-hour non-stop flight from Egypt to Darwin, Australia. So that's impressive for the time. So this set some records back then, so therefore the famous plane that most people never heard of. I don't know about for those of you over there on the other side of the pond in, in Great Britain, if you guys are more familiar with this plane, but in America... This is kind of a, a, a what? <laughs> uh, and that was my reaction when I saw this in a shop in the Matchbox uh, box and said, oh, I got to try this thing. This looks interesting and uh, not disappointed. Fun, fun build. So Matchbox kits, which I'll show you another one in just a second to give you an idea what, what they're like uh, if you haven't built one. So they're kind of, they're not unlike early airfix kits in a way 
the detail, I, it, it's decent. It's not up to like uh, Hasegawa, Tamiya, Hobby Boss, the, that kind of quality of today's kits. But for the 70s, early 80s, and so forth, the, the, these weren't bad. And you could, you could paint them up and make a pretty reasonable model out of them. I mean, you guys can be the judge on this one. Um, but they're fun. The detail, I mean, they're pretty... The, the panel lines can, I guess some would say, you know, from reading some reviews and so forth online, I think some of the panel lines are a little overly engraved, I guess, was one of the comments. And the raised surfaces, but uh, it's not bad in this one, because I think you can see the fabric, you can see the geodetic construction on it. Um, you know, there are some areas I think Putty probably would have worked on this if I really wanted to be um, focused on detail. You know, maybe the other gear uh, carriage doors there could have been done better, but you know, hey, I had fun building it. A lot of decals on this, as you can see. But it was fun. That's the main thing. The interior detail is next to zero. I mean, there were a couple of pilot and uh, rear gunner figures there, but but hey, paint, decals, it's not bad. So, let me explain a little bit more about the history of this plane, and uh, then we'll show you another example of a matchbox kit. So I'm going to refer to this Bill Gunston book, which has kind of been my Bible for uh, doing aircraft for quite some time. You know, it's an old book, but still a great book. So let's look at the Vickers Wellesley. Yeah. So yeah, first flight in uh, June of 1935. Service delivery in April of 1937. And the final delivery was in May of 1938. So according to the uh, back of the box, which is how the painting instructions were done on the Matchbox kits, uh, this one here is from Trans Jordan, as they called it then, Jordan, Mon Jordan, in 1938. But I would imagine the World War II version would not have been that much different. Maybe there would have been a fin flash, as opposed to this interesting uh, insignia that's on there now. My guess, but who knows. Um, I mean, I guess we have some idea from this photo here. It looks, yeah, it looks like a wartime photo, but going over a mountain range. You can see the bottom here. A couple of photos, and there's the wildebeest and some other stuff that we're, that we're maybe more familiar with. So yeah, this is so much more superior to the biplane they were design, designing at the time. And this, did, uh, as I mentioned, this formed a special long-range development flight, the test trials that went the 48-hour uh, non-stop flights. And that was in November of 1938, not 1937. It was 38 when they did that. And as it says here, they were active in the Middle East and East Africa up to late 1942. So it's not a, a bad lifespan for this. And it seems about... Um, I think I said 176 of these were built. Not bad for a plane that most of us have never heard of, but fun one to build. And that's something I really liked about Matchbox is they picked some really weird topics for their model kits. Um, so it was fun. And then, of course, as we were talking, here's the one we're probably more familiar with. That's the Wellington, which carried on that, uh, you can see it, geodetic construction in the wings. You can see that there. Anyway, moving on. Let's look at... This is what Matchbox kits look like, for those of you who haven't seen one back in the day, but that lovely uh, yellow, orange, red <laughs> logo, you know, with the Matchbox name, because most of us are familiar with the toy cars and other stuff with that name. But they would give you, you know, usually like three good decal options would come with the kit. Or two, and the smaller ones give, give you two. And they would mold them in these multicolored plastic trees. And for a kid, that was kind of fun. 
when I was really young, I thought, no, it's neat. You don't have to paint it because it's already got some funky colors going. And I, I'm saying funky colors because they tended to be funky colors. <laughs> Not necessarily um, accurate whatsoever for the kit you were building. Uh, let's see how it is in this one. And, and again, this is, I don't know about you guys over on the other side of the pond. Stranrayer. Don't know what this is really. I mean, I've researched it since I picked this up. And if you notice, you can see the price tag in the corner here. This is from when a toy store, a local toy store here in the States was uh, going out of business. And sadly, a lot of the toy stores did. Two bucks. I mean, why don't you just give it to me, right? Although the original price is $8.99, so not too bad, huh? Miss the toy stores, but that's a whole other issue. Oh, there's a couple of sheets of decals. That's interesting. So, but this is typical. You get these decals. Look like they're pretty much in register, too, which is nice. Yeah, they are. That's cool. I do believe they have one of these in the uh, RAF Museum just outside London. You know, and the instructions would tend to be these very simple types of things here. They would have this really complex, you can see that in a way, you know, painting instructions, if you could follow it. Uh, yeah, I don't know how they denoted it here. But anyway, there's your big, long painting. Oh, here it is. And it would show you what these interior colors and whatnot you would do would be exp explained here and these blow up pictures which could be a little overly complicated to look at but this is typical of putting one of these together although obviously the single seat plan would be a lot less complicated and I over the years I built a number of of kits from uh, Matchbox. Yeah, some oddball ones. So there's, uh, yeah, some silver ones here. I guess one camouflage version. So, and this was a 1936 uh, seaplane, which continued to be used until 1942. What was this to do? Yeah, kind of patrol. Yeah, maritime patrol plane. Seaplane. And one thing that was kind of neat is they did have some other, Matchbox did make some other interesting seaplanes. Like they make one of the Heinkel seaplanes, the floats. That was a really cool plane. And one thing I thought was always cool about uh, Matchbox kits, like with the Heinkel uh, seaplane, is they gave you markings for um, the Germans and for Finland. So they, they tended to include uh, some interesting color options for their kits and so but here's what i mean about the funky colors i mean that's quite the green huh <laughs> and then he give you another tree that was in i don't know what you want to call that earth brown dark green that's a khaki it's kind of disgusting but <laughs> and then you know the other two trees, which are identical here, are gray, so you can get through. Are they identical? Well, maybe not. But they look at this, so they're, they're all gray. It's very heavy plastic, too. It's a different it's a different kind of plastic. And there, see, so you, you can see the very pronounced uh, detail there. You know, maybe, maybe it's overdone, but as some would argue. But it's there. Yeah, so yeah, the fun would be as a kid, yeah, you don't need to paint it, you got some colors. Uh, but for the rest of us that probably moved on from that stage in our lives, you want to paint this. I mean that's gonna take a lot of primer. <laughs> but hey. But that's the fun of some of these old kits, right? So nostalgia. whatnot so here's a pair of matchbox kits 
you know, focusing mainly on the uh, Wellesley. All right, that's our quick little uh, workshop today, and hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun looking at some of these old Matchbox skits, and keep on modeling, and uh, keep, keep having fun out there. All right, we'll see you on the next episode. Bye now.